Boom, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Concord Health Podcast. Um, today, we've got a cool guest on, good friend of mine, Laz Diaz, who is a vicious Muay Thai fighter um, and owner of LazFitnessPerformance.com. Laz, what's going on, man? How you doing, mate? I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Good, good. What's, um, how's how's uh, lockdown life treating you? Um, yeah, as it's ups and downs, as you know, we're all human. Um, I'm just trying to get things done, you know, like I've finished my website. Um, I'm trying to get more comfortable um, on video, executing exercises and different techniques for clients, writing a few blogs, just sort of getting all that admin behind the scenes work done, you know. And obviously yeah, yeah. it's good because I'm getting my own train. I've got more time for myself. So I'm making a, it's, it's, it's a pain in the bum, but I'm making the most of what I can do, you know. How are you finding that as as a fighter? Like, obviously, there's no no sparring and no yeah. club work at the moment. Is that you finding that difficult? Uh, to be fair, just before it finished, just before it started, um, I had a little bit of a break from the spot. I was just literally just a pad man, but it's made me realise how much I actually miss it being locked in. And yeah. I think this is this is, this is to have the effect on me. I think I'm gonna. It's sort of bringing a little bit of hunger back to fighting. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. I mean, so many fighters do that over their career, right? Like, I took a two-year break. I went yeah. from boxing and then came back to it. I was just drilling myself so hard all the time. Mm. You just becomes a thing rather than a rather than a passion. I mean, not for everyone. I see loads of loads of UFC guys and boxers. They can just go full steam ahead, especially when they're full time, right? The whole time. Yeah. But sometimes when you're working. And you've got other goals and things in your life. If you're overextending yourself with the training all the time, you just burn out, and and it kind of mentally you can fatigue as well, and you just don't want to do it anymore, or not, or you just want to break. You do want to do it, but you want to break. You know that you're going in there. You're like, oh. Half-heartedly. Hey. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not good because um, if you're in it, you've got to be fully in it. I mean, yeah. There's no point going in it thinking about your business whilst the guy in the corner doesn't even have a job and he don't even care about money. He just wants to take your head off, you know? <laughs> it's, it's not good. You need to be... Number one priority is having a tear-up and coming out the winner, you know? No, that's not a good fucking place to be. If you're not mentally prepared in that sport... Oh, 100%. combat sport, you know, it's the one thing... Maybe, you know, along with games like rugby, but their team sports is different. If you're not mentally prepared and you're mentally invested in, in, in your fight or, or even your sparring, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt bad. Yeah. yeah. What's, yeah. Um, so what's, um, what's cracking off then? So, I mean, talk to, talk to the guys, talk to the viewers about your journey. Um, I mean, I've seen some of your fights and your, your, what, when, what, were you, what are you weighing now? Fuck. <laughs> Uh, I last weighed myself um, a couple of weeks ago. I think I weighed about 103 kilos. <laughs> I'll put you in it hard there. I'll put you in it hard. But, uh, you, what, I'm, you... about, I'm about 15 kilos above my fight weight. <laughs> right, so you, you fought what, about 90 kilos? Yeah, 90 at the most. I like to stay at 90 because I feel, I feel light, but I'm still I'm quite, a, I'm quite a big cruiserweight. So it's always better for me to cut, get under that 95 and get weighed in on, at 90 and then I've come back a bit heavier the next day, you know? Mm. Yeah. But what, 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 what got you into it? What got you into Muay Thai? Everyone, it's an interesting thing. Everyone, everyone that fights has got something, has got a story. It's never that organic. What, what? No. Um, straightforward. I, what got you into it? Do you remember, do you, do you remember them? I, like, it's, it's funny because uh, I, I tell my little girl, I'm like, you kids aren't allowed to watch these things. But I, I was saying to her, she's eight, and I was saying to her, when I was eight, I was literally um, sat cross-legged in front of the TV, like probably about an inch away from the screen, watching um, the old school Van Damme films, Chuck Norris films, Bruce Lee, um, back in the day when uh, Mike Tyson was in his prime and he was fighting, when he knocked out, when he stopped Frank Bruno. I was, you know, you know my dad and my mum just brought me up with the, with the love of martial arts. I mean, my dad was a massive Bruce Lee fan and Chuck Norris fan and a Mike Tyson fan. And that yeah. was all, it was either that Real Madrid or Man United on the TV, you know? Yeah. So. I, 
honestly, I, I think anyone that boxes now from that mm. Tyson period onwards, I'm adamant if you took it as a percentage, like 80 plus percent of people are in combat sports because of Mike Tyson. I do believe that. People used to stay up late watching him. Even now, you look at his... He's just been putting some videos out lately. Have you seen? Oh, him? mate, what a ledge. I know. I mean, he's like a savage still at 53. And, yeah. I mean, he looks fit. You never know what, what someone like that can do. But I hope he don't hurt himself. But anyway, that's a different story. But him just putting these videos out now has had generated almost more interest than the heavyweight boxing division does Currently, it's crazy, man. He's if you think about, yeah, you think about our dads are going to be watching him now, thinking, "Wow, that's Mike." We're watching him because we were kids. You got you got about three generations watching him now, like you know. And then, and then, our, like our kids are hearing about Mike Tyson. Just as he, everyone knows Mike Tyson to such a superior level. No matter how much he wants to get rid of that tank, the baddest man on the planet, he's always going to be that guy. Um, and I tell you, man, it's like. If he has a bout, I don't care if it's a three-round exhibition or a proper full bout of 53, and it was a pay-per-view, it's going to generate millions. Because it's just oh, people who yeah. fucking love Tyson, and they, they just want to see those young days replicated. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm digressing a bit here, but I do believe the day that he beat Spinks for the world title, that, that day, I believe that no heavyweight past or present on that particular day would have beaten him. Peak, up peak, Ali, just anybody in their peak versus that particular day was a man possessed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. What you saying, anyone, I, I always say, like, you've got two fighters that are like gonna fight, they're both at a high level, they both trained for 20 years, they, they're both black belts in this, black belts in that. They both they've got strengths and weaknesses in different areas, but overall, they're both pretty hard and. They've both got the same level of professionalism, same level of coaches, everything, the diet, nutritionists, they're all on the same sort of path. But it, it, at the end of the day, it's about who turns up on the day. Yeah, yeah. And it's just sometimes it's, you know, it's written in the stars of people like him. He was, he was just meant to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was meant to be who he was meant to be, man. It was, it was, he was such a, such a pure fighter. There was just no, there was no, I mean, he was massively skilled and custom art had done a great job of him, but there was, you can't teach someone what he had, that, that raw ability to, to be able to fight like that. Not just box, but fight. But, yeah, anyway, so sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm going off the uh, track of um, martial arts, Mike Tyson. So, you, you obviously, you were brought up with something from a young age then. Yeah. yeah. From a young age. Yeah, I loved it. I, I was always um, feeling, my, even my grandma said, um, when I was in the back garden, in my in my old karate, because I think they, my mum sent my mum and dad. Uh, I went to Beavers, and I got after a week. I got I got asked to leave because I was too hyperactive. Right. <laughs> uh, it was uh, my mum. My mum was like, "Oh, my mum said to my dad, uh, what do you think about this karate place?'" So they sent me to a shot shot I can't play uh, school, and uh, I cracked on from there. And my nan always said when she saw me in the back garden in my gi, like messing about as a kid she was like I knew you was going to be doing be doing something like that to channel your energy you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just sort of fell, fell into it and it just yeah I never really looked I had a little bit of a break in my adolescent days but luckily when I got back into it like just turning 18 like after having a drink and enjoying that sort of 15 to 18 period I sort of thought yeah it's boring now I, I want to train and stuff and luckily I did the karate from like sort of 10 to 14, I had them, I had them, it was like riding a bike, my body mechanics were sort of used to their <coughs> movements, like the yeah, yeah, yeah. roundhouse, the front kick, it's all karate, taekwondo, muay thai, a roundhouse is a roundhouse, there's just slightly different versions you can throw it, you know, but the, me the mechanical movements are the same, so I was sort of lucky that I picked it up fast as an 18 year old, I was still supple, still flexible, and I was lucky I had a good coach as well, that's another good thing, that's all. Well, so what, what level did you get to? So you were doing karate for how long? Uh, about four years. I, I'm, you know what? I'm gutted. I never made it to a black belt. Uh, I think I got like three quarters. I think I got to um, the first brown. Because there's brown and there's this brown with the stripe, isn't there? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I got to that. That's what happens when you're a kid though, right? When you're young. It's like, I don't know what that is, but then as you get through that, that early youth stage, you come out the other end and you, you do these things by choice more. You, you hit the training harder purely by choice. I think when you're younger, you do love it, but yeah. you're relying on people to take you and stuff. Parents to take you. And, mm. and if the situation's not right, you can't get there often. But I think if I remember correctly, I think, I think they moved, unfortunately. I think they moved somewhere ridiculous. Obviously, it was in Radlett, so it was literally around the corner from home. I think they moved like sort of a few towns away, and I think my mum was just like, it's, it's not really, we can't do it. That's the thing, right? But if, you're, if you want to go by yourself, and you're 18 and you're driving, yeah. it, it's, you start taking it upon yourself, and that's part of being a, a fighter, is that commitment to just turn up without relying on anybody. It's such an individual, lonely sport. Um, it, it's a cool thing like that. So you, you hit the karate till um, a good. When did it go from there? I mean, what, how did it progress? How did yeah, like I said, I, I, I sort of um, turned in, like just. I think I got to fourteen. Obviously, I was playing football as well. I think the football and the karate sort of stopped, and I was just sort of just just became a teenager, like a late, like sort of an, a, a, the the standard, like the stereotypical fourteen-year-old. I think I sort of. Got but like the karate stop. I mean, I probably would have carried it on and probably would have got a black belt in that art. But obviously, they moved. But I sort of had 14, 15, 16, messing around, probably drinking up to 18. And then I was in it. I, I thought, right, I'm not doing this anymore. I think I put on a little bit of weight. Not much, but I just thought, I need to get in shape. And I started training um, in this gym. I think it was a David Lloyd. I just started doing some, just some resistance, just weights. And uh, I met this, this guy in there. And he was talking to me, and he happens to be um, the chief instructor of Shaolin kickboxing. This, yeah. Uh, yeah, Kingsley. This he was my my second coach technically. And he said to me, he goes, "What's your what's your goals?" And I said, "I, I want to cut, get a bit leaner, get stronger. I like I want to do get back into martial arts." And he turns around like it's weird. It's like he was meant to be there. And I think a week following from that, I was with him, and I trained with him for six years, and I got a black belt, first degree black belt under him. Ah, okay, so you did get your black belt. You got a black belt. Yeah, yeah I got one under him, yeah. So, yeah. Then I, he sort of chucked me. I, I, only had, I only ever had two amateur fights. With big, stupid gloves. Um, <laughs> stupid head guard. It's like, I swear, you can't, you can't knock people out of these. But I, I did, uh, I remember I was like 19 or 20, and uh, King was like, right, you're, you're fighting this guy. I was like, bloody hell, he's a full-grown man. He was like, he was like my age now. He was, like, he was probably about 32. And I'm like, I'm like a little skin, no, not skinny, but about 84 kilos, nine, yeah, 19 year old. And I, I remember I, I, I didn't, I gave him two eight counts with them big bloody gloves on as well. And uh, and I broke my toe and luckily I stopped him just before that because I couldn't walk for shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, it was awful. Um, you know what, those, those first couple of fights, man, that's... Uh, that's where it's at. That's where you figure out, am I going to carry on doing this or not? Because I don't know about you, but my first bout, yeah, yeah. Oh man, the anxiety for like for a week before. It wasn't even on the day. It was like a week before, and then running up to the, the day of the fight when I got to the venue and I'm warming up at the back. Yeah. I just my head was running away with me. I was thinking, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. How can I get out of it? Can I feign an injury? And he, I'm looking at my opponent and all of a sudden he looks like twice as big as what he is. And like my brain was just completely gone. But ultimately, once you do it that first, second time, you just, get, you know, some people don't stay to it. But if you're a proper fighter, you get calmer and calmer and you just, you rationalise things so, so much more. It, it doesn't yeah. matter the quality of those first couple of fights. It's just can you do it or not, in my opinion. Yeah, and you're breathing and everything as well. I used to find uh, that that's the number with my coach King. He used to he used to do meditation with us. He used to do, like not like the stereotypical like like a monk in the mountains. He would just literally lay on our back, palms up, breathe, and he would just be talking to us. And he his gift was getting into like like one of his best one of the best things he could other than him being an all round martial artist um, training. The Dutch style of stri art striking, like the Dutch Thai boxing, the Muay Thai style, the flicky kickbox. He, he had it all. He was, you know, he was that sort of style. And he, the, he used to get in our heads and he really used to calm us down. He used to just call me the day before the fight and just have a good chat. 
And by the halfway through the call, I'd, I'd feel so much better. The anxiety would almost disappear. Like he was really good at that. And I, sometimes I find the older I got, like up to my last fight, like two years ago, I found my anxiety was worse then than I was when I was younger. It's really strange. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, so, like, I can hear, I can see that though. Like some, it's almost the um, the ignorance of youth, right? When you, yeah. you almost you're not that tuned into your own emotions, and it kind of goes one way or the other. You go the other way, like what you're saying. You could be more aware of all sorts of things from injuries to illnesses to like to getting hurt in the fight to all sorts of crazy things to, to, to the fear of loss but when you're young you're just going in there and just having a, you're just having a tear up you're just getting fit yeah. with your skill and you just can't wait yeah. to get in there and have a punch up I, I see that I completely see that yeah, yeah. yeah um, how many more tie fights have you had now then where, where are you at uh, so it was a mixture of uh, Muay Thai and kickboxing, sort of K1 style. Um, I think I got to about, I had two amateur ones, literally two, I'm ridiculous. Um, and I had, I think, about 14, 14 pro ones. Okay. And that, they, the, the, yeah. the Muay Thai or? Uh, it was a mixture. Um, some of them were C-class Muay Thai, basically the full rules without elbows. A couple of them ones were elbows, but my, my coaches always seem to put me more in that, in that K1 style kickboxing, sort of, um, it's, ba- it's, it's a bit faster, it's more westernised, more, le- less, because uh, you see no elbows, it's, it's, it's more fast pace than the Muay Thai, the Muay Thai is more slow, grab knee, more, more, more of the clinch and more of the trips. The K1. No, 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 no. Explain, explain that to a dummy like me. What's the um, what's the C class Muay Thai? What 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 is that? Uh, oh, the C. Oh, the C class is it's basically a pro fight. No no shin guards, no head guards or anything. It's all the standard groin guard. The only difference was <laughs> uh, you can you can't elbow. Ah. You can't elbow. Yeah, and then B class is elbow, but no knees to the head or something silly like that, and then. Then there's eight. Then there's just Muay Thai, but that's only in England. I think you can, uh, like, for example, in France, you can't. They don't. They don't allow full Muay Thai rules. They, they, you have to wear um, the elbow pads. Um, it's just the rule, yeah. So all the top. Uh, I've always seen sort of like Liam Harrison, the top uh, Thai fighter in the UK, is yeah. the literally best fighter for the last ten years. Right, guys, um, did he win the title? Didn't, hey? didn't he win the title? Who's that? Liam Harrison, did he recently win the title, win the belt, or recently, uh, last year maybe, I'm going to say? Uh, he, 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 his last fight I saw him, he, he was on the one championship, he knocked someone out of a left hook, it was bloody savage. Yeah, that's it. What did he, does he, who's the guy from Nosey's that re- recently won a title? Oh, are you talking about Haggerty, Jonathan Haggerty? That's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah. he's the boy, yeah, he, he's, he's the new, he's the new Liam Harrison. He's, he's right. He's, He's, he's an animal, Lou, mate. Absolutely. But he's so beautiful to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's an elbow technician. Literally, he's an elbow technician. I, I saw him. his fight. Guy's a, guy's a savage. He's only small, right? I think he's... Yeah, 60 odd kilos, yeah. Yeah, he's small. He, he bangs. He bangs hard. And he's, he's got so much... Uh, his last fight was brilliant. I mean, he fought a guy called Rod Tang. And like, just looking at Haggerty, his style, his movement, everything's beautiful. But... Rod Tang's just one of them tight boys that just come forward everything just with a tight guard and just everything bounces off him he just comes forward and he stopped him unfortunately but it was a, it was a bloody good fight they're, they're tough though man those ties they're doing you know they're doing more tight from like age five six right some ridiculously young age. So, so, yeah yeah but and so was Haggerty uh, yeah. Haggerty was as well like yeah that that's is why I mean. most of the ties they retired at a young age right yeah, yeah. Oh, mean, over, uh, overall, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are retiring, what, early, mid-20s with, like, two, three hundred, like, a crazy amount of fights as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they, they fight like... Um, yeah. I'm really tough fuckers. It's, um, it's interesting, though. If you've grown up with that level of discipline and you're so focused on a martial art like that, any martial art where you compete in, really, I don't care if it's boxing, Muay Thai, BJJ, could be anything, you're definitely taking some good life skills with you. You really are. It's not, 
you, you know, it teaches you when, when you're dealing with shit in your life, because we all do, some more than others, there's something about being mm. a fighter, because once you're, once you're a fighter, you're, you're, you're always a fighter, basically. And that's always with you. So you've always got that, that, that coping capacity to deal with mm. shit that life throws at you, whereas some people, they just crumble. They crumble, and you know life is life's not an easy place. Being a human being is hard, man. It's freaking hard being a good human being, anyway. So, yeah. come into any any parent. I don't care if you've got a boy or a girl. Take them to do some form of martial art. That is so so important. So important. What um? So you 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 done a more combat league, right? That was my last one, yeah. Royal Combat League, my last competition. Yeah. Where was that? That that was in what? That was our home. That was in the Watford Coliseum. Hey. Yeah. That was um. You were saying you performed well in that fight, right? Sorry. You you were saying that was one of your best performances in that fight? Yeah. Well, it only lasted. It was the first. It was the. Uh, I got well. I got. I thought it's funny because um, literally just before the bell went. The ref sort of looked at me. I got caught with a left hook straight on the temple, my right side of my temple. And my eyes obviously must have gone back and the ref sort of waved it. And uh, literally straight after that, I was just like, I was all right. So if the, if the bell would have gone, Chris would have just thrown some water in me, in my face, slapped me and I would have woken up and I'd have been all right. But it was, okay, yeah. Man. Time it was is a such a thing. Yeah, I thought I, 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 I am right. And it it clapped him. Uh, it must. It, it surely it, it must have not connected properly. Because when I throw an overhand right, I throw one with hundred percent commitment. And yeah. I, as I threw it, it, it sort of hit him, and he threw the left hook at the same time. I even slow moed it and put it on my Instagram. It's just like it, it was, it's it's one of them things, you know. But like it, it's sort of just it's one of them. You know, you got the knockout. It's like one of them fuds, but you know, it's one of them ones. <laughs> The, the, the ref obviously the fought, Yeah, sorry? The equilibrium, one of them ones with the equilibrium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Actually, the one. When you, when you get hit with one of them, you're seeing three people in front of you, and you're trying to decide yeah. which one to hit. Well, um, just, where, was, um, where was the fight when you, you, you stopped the guy with a spinning back fist? That was, that was brutal. That, if that, anyone, that, that was the one. I think that was, yeah, that was a couple before. The French, it, the, my last it, where can people see that? Because if anyone wants to know what you're about, that spinning practice was so <laughs> savage. I mean, like that—that that was proper. Where can is that on YouTube? Um, yeah, it should be on my Insta. I think I share. Nosey Academy shared it on their story the other, uh, the other day, so I reshared it. It'd be somewhere on my, be on my Instagram, somewhere on my Instagram um, feed. Instagram to the show notes after because that was. I mean, that was proper, man. That guy, that, man, he must, that, that was a big shot. He must have been out for a while. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, he was up sort of, I don't, I never like, um, I've been on both, I've been, I've been, I've been knocked the fuck out and I've knocked the fuck out of people. So I've been both ends of the spectrum. So yeah. as a fighter, you have to pre, like, I don't, I don't like to fully celebrate till I know he's up, he's breathing and he's healthy because we're, 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 we're two fighters disciplined and putting it, putting the work in to, provide a show so it's always nice to know that like you're you, that your opponent's all right you know and healthy and yeah good. i mean there's a lot to be said for that i i'd um i mean fortunately all the years i've boxed i've never I, I never got put on the deck ever um it could happen but it could happen yeah. um i took too many shots over the years but i never got put on the deck but i've put i've put people out cold before and like yeah, yeah. I'm never a massive fan of going wild until you know someone's all right. Because at the end of the day, you know, no matter what rivalries you've got, those people got kids, got family, it's another person. Um, so I'm never a big fan of that. But we all love a good knockout, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course we do. We all yeah, love like to see one. As long as the person's all right in the end, we, we, we all love to see one and we all love to give one. I, I did break my hand in that fight. I don't know. I don't know if it was from the from the spinning back fist or or an uppercut. I don't know what I did it, but my my thumb. I broke my thumb in three places. I'd lit, I thought it would be all right. I didn't realize. I went to. I went had an X ray on it three days later, and the nurse was like, "You need surgery, my love." I was just like, "Oh, for fuck's sake!" 
God, like, man. She's like, yeah, she goes, like, you need it ASAP. So do you want to go home, get your stuff, and you stay on the ward for the night? I was like, for fuck's sake. But yeah, it's all stored now. It's all good. It's fine now. I remember when you had that. What's that? Yeah. What was your training like? You know, when you were competing, when you were fighting, what 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 was your what was your day? What was a normal day's training? Oh bloody hell! I'd probably well, obviously, because we're working after like they don't pay you enough, so you got to do it for the love. So you're working full time, obviously. So before work, I'd probably get up at. I'd be training twice a day, maybe five times a week if I can, but I'd. Towards the end of my, towards, as I got older, I realised I need to get them rest days in because it's just mm. as important. So I'd normally try and try train twice a day. I'd get up in the morning, go for a road run. It, yeah. Depending on how I feel, I'd just go for a long, slow one just to get the, have a nice stretch. Sometimes if I was feeling a bit stronger, I'd do some sprints in between lampposts, hit a hill, shadow box. And then I would do some sort of training in the evening whether it would be a bit of strength and conditioning, a bit of mobility work. Most of the time it would be pads, um, pad work with my coach, 12 rounds of sparring, a bit of clinching, a few rounds of like Muay Thai clinching, and then um, just drills on the bags, and then maybe a, a slow jog or maybe a bit of strength, sort of mixing it up. Depending, I had it written down. It would be twice a day, though, normally. Always twice a day. Maybe once over the weekend. And then once over the weekend, whether it was a swim or a little cheeky pad session with a mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was a twice a day, sometimes, sometimes three times a day, yeah. um, which was like probably mostly to him more than anything. Is, uh, yeah. Did you find it Did you find it hard to recover um, back doing twice, you know, twice a day with work? Is that a difficult thing for you? Um. You know what, I think I just had to get, it's, I find, as I got older, I found it was all about balance and it's like the nutrition game is so important. Mm. Getting them carbs in, getting, up, getting enough water in. Uh, it's not even just the carbs, you just, your macro, your micronutrients and your macronutrients, it's just getting that balance. Well, I I to talk, while you're on that, let's talk diet. Let's, because that's part of recovery, right? So yeah. you know, I presume that's changed over the years, but what what's uh, what's the diet looking like? You are a paleo guy, keto guy? What oh, I'm a paleo. I've always been a, a, I, I like a variety of whole foods. You know, if I'm gonna eat eggs, I'm gonna eat eggs. I, I just whole foods, yeah. Um, yeah I, mean, I don't really eat pork too much, but other than pork, if it if it if it, like, I eat all plant based foods. All the right meats, but like you're saying, it's paleo, all whole foods, mate. Solid whole foods, cooked fresh. That's me, you know. Yeah, so you don't, you don't overthink it. it. You don't overthink it. It's micronutrient dense, paleo style, from good quality. That, there's a lot to be said for that. There's a lot of overthinking of diets out there, especially nowadays. Um, yeah. A lot of that's due to so much conflict and shit that's about films, yeah. changes coming out. Um, you know, promoting vegan athletes, keto this, paleo that, and people think, what the fuck should I do? I mean, people just don't know. And like, I th when you start measuring food and stressing to that level about your food, unless you have specific intolerances, exactly, yeah. you're probably doing more damage than good by, by stressing about what you're eating. It should be a much more organic process. Um, and you know, and if you're an athlete, especially a pro level athlete you probably do want to get some testing done uh run regular blood look for food intolerances but ideally if your if your gut is optimized well to extract nutrients and you've got good gut health having a paleolithic micronutrient dense diet and as long as you have calories you're, you're going to be fine for the most part in my opinion anyway and take your supplement. sorry and take your supplements. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, people say, do you take protein? I only ever used to take really supplements, I like really go hard with the supplements in the fight camp, like the old glutamine, your BCAAs, a little bit of extra protein if you need to be, what else do I say, something else? Do you find the difference? Do you find the difference when you take the supplements? Yeah, I've got, I've got it, I used to get them off my friend Raf, he's, um, He's got a vitamin shop in North Watford. He's he's a martial artist as well. He's he's, he's quite knowledgeable in his vitamin shop, and he's the. Raf the wrestler. Huh? Raf the wrestler. 
Yeah, 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 Raph, Raphael, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's, fought, he's, he's, had, he's fought MMA, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's, he's dived into the MMA game, yeah. He's where, 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 where was he, Kate? Where was he? Uh, uh, UCMMA or UCMMA? Um, or? I think he fought, he fought in a few different, uh, he fought in a few different promotions. Uh, I think UCMMA is one. I've seen him in Essex. He fought on Bellator as well. Really? Yeah, he fought a few, yeah. Mate, he's, 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 he's the last person you want. Once, once he's got you in some sort of headlock, mate, you, you need to... Uh, <laughs> you, don't need, you don't want to get caught in a headlock. No, 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 no. He's, um, I've heard he's a proper savage. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. But yeah, he used to... Um, what is that Polish uh, brand of supplement? I can't remember what they're called now. But I, he used to, they, I used to take the BCAAs, a few certain things... I used to take within my whole foods, paleo, if you want to call it, diet. And that always used to, yeah, some, like, yeah, it's sort of the recovery process. I, I always found that L-glutamine was, was, is of massive help to me, just for, for um, repairing gut, repairing muscles, uh, yeah. just helping with just general, general fatigue, etc. cetera. It's, um, it's really underrated. Multivitamins, fish oils, um, CoQ10 for some energy production is um, the mitochondrial pro um, uh, production, etc. Is something that's what we need. That's that's a very mitochondria. That's a very a powerhouse of the cell, right? Exactly, energy within the cells, right? So um, that's another important thing. I think you know it's really important nowadays in age. Our food is so nutrient deficient that mm. we make sure we get our supplements in because. We just don't extract enough from the food that we eat, unfortunately. Mm. I really, really do believe that. What's, um, so you're not fighting at the moment. What's, what's, what's your, your next steps, do you think, fight-wise? Um, well, at the moment, I'm sort of focusing just, I'm really like, the last three years, I've really been pushing um, Laz Fitness and my coaching. And So what do you do? What, what is Laz Fitness? Tell, tell the people what Laz is. So, it's basically it's basically my I've I've been training sort of non-stop since sort of eighteen, so I'm thirty three this year. So a good like bloody hell. But yeah, good fifteen years of solid training. I've never looked back, you know. And it's a mixture of everything I've learned as a fighter, martial artist, and Laz Fitness is sort of built it, I sort of didn't realise in the beginning that I wanted to be a coach, you know. I just loved the fighting and the training. I, yeah. suppose, I suppose I was building Las Fitness then and I didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, it's everything I believe in like, gives you truly great results that will last a lifetime, you know? I, I always believed if, if, I can, if I can train like this and it'll make my punches stronger, it'll make my kicks stronger, it'll make just, it'll just basically condition and strengthen everything functionally and with the movement and it'll... I always say, if I can punch as hard as I can, as I can in the first round for 20 rounds, then I know the, the, the training's working, you know? And yeah. I, I say that I, I cater for all levels and abilities. And like, I've, I've trained kids all, all, all ages. Um, I've got a 72-year-old man I train. Really? You know, yeah, he is like, a legend. And I just, obviously, everyone's at their own level. But I think there's, there's athleticism in any, in any human being. And that's how I sort of I sort of get that athleticism out of them. And then once I sort of get him on that, <coughs> so get that athleticism out of them, then they're they're already on the you're, they're already on the path to their goal. Whether they want to lose a bit of weight, put on, everyone and let's be serious, everyone wants to lose a little bit of weight and put on a bit of muscle mass. And at the end of the day, it's all about increasing your muscle mass and dropping your body fat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, so so. I was going to ask you that. So you train? It's not just fighters. Or it's not fighters that you train, you train all sorts, women, men. Yeah, the general pop, gen general population, yeah. Okay, yeah. and, and your training style, is it incorporating mainly fight stuff into their training? Is that, your, is that what you do? Yeah, basically, yeah. Like, um, a mixture, of, so I sort of basically, my, my pad work session, it's basically, they're basically hit, but it's not like a, a boxer size session, you know? It's... Um, they're realistic fight techniques. I'm not going to show them anything, Mickey. I'm going to show them what will, what will technically help them. It's a self-defense in one way, but it's a great hit workout. But it's basically a mixture of Muay Thai, 
kickboxing and Western boxing, my pad, my pad work drills from all the different styles I've learned from my coaches in the UK, my coaches I've had in Holland, Spain, Thailand. So I've picked up different tricks from all of them and I sort of combine it together. And what I know that works, I, I train that with, I train on, the, on my, all my clients and students and I mix it up with strength work and nutrition. Obviously, um, I need to improve their mobility, their full range of movement. So I'll get them doing a lot of the strength work you do yourself, Louis. Like all of these, like the, the sumo deadlift, the squats, the front squats, all of them functional movements that make you physically stronger. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Not just the gym for your, for your life, you know, so you can endure a better quality of life. I, I combine that with the martial art pad work and techniques and and they just get stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's proved, I've proved it myself to in my own life. It, it works and I thoroughly believe in it. And every single one of my clients, we've got to do is look at my reviews and the proof it works, mate. And that's what I believe in. And that's what sort of sculpt, that's what sculpted Laz Fitness. Really. And <laughs> belief in something. Learning. Sorry? You have a belief in something and you and put it into practice you know that shit works so it's great for anybody to come to a safe environment with a good coach like yourself with experience whether they're a male or a female regardless of the age or as if, as if you know they've got any interest in fighting or not anyone can gain could gain a lot by learning how to punch kick elbow not just from their fitness and their flexibility but for confidence as well yeah, mentally, yeah. massive massive confidence thing you um so what where are you doing it? Are you you got your own unit at the moment? Yeah, yeah, I'm just in Watford in, in a little studio, not far from home at the moment. Um I'm seeing this obviously I wanted to uh go to a gym or go to I was gonna change some but obviously this COVID situations um put a little bit of a spanner in the work. So I've resort re, I'm going online a little bit now. I'm sort of like I said earlier to you, I'm so since this situation's happened, everyone's had to adapt. So obviously I've got my website. I'm now sort of doing a few virtual sessions, which are quite good, really. I'm, I'm quite enjoying them. I'm making a, we're making it. I mean, I saw you doing them as well. We've got to make the best out of the situation, you know? Yeah, people have got to train, right? I think it's going to make our online presence a lot stronger in the end. I think it's sort of, I think for some people that have got people that just don't give up no matter what life throws at them. It's, it's a good kick up the arse in one way of looking at it because it's made me, I'm doing virtual sessions and I'm, my online game's like picking up and I've actually realised, wow, I'm uh, quite good at this online stuff. But at the same time, I am an in-person trainer. I need to be there. And it's good old fashioned pad whacking. You can't beat it, can you? Uh, of course not. I mean, you know what? Um, it is what it is, like you said. There's, there's always, there's no perfect situation in life. There's always spanners that are going to go, that are going to, you know, be thrown in the works in front of us and issues that are going to crop up. And the ones that keep going are the ones that achieve things. And I tell you what, one, one big thing with this COVID is that people that are overweight are at massive risk of dying compared to people that are not. So yeah, yeah. people seriously need to take a look at themselves and use this time to start getting fit and healthy, take your supplements, eat the correct diet, go get a trainer. If you're not doing shit all, go and find a trainer or do some shit on YouTube. There's loads of free stuff out there, but seriously, you have to do something because it's, you're going to give, you might get it, and I'm not, it's not going to stop you getting it, but it's going to, it might stop you dying and it might stop you being so sick. So, yeah. you know, just COVID, there's other diseases out there and you just, you've got to, you've got to keep yourself fit and healthy, man. Well, this is it. This is it. This is it. I really, well, I, I hope it opens up a lot of people's eyes after because there, there's a lot of it, this COVID thing. I think that I think I, was, I, I got it personally in the second week of Jan. I was fuck man. The first yeah, week, I, I, I had it. It was so yeah, weird. I was literally like, I've had loads. I've had I've had quite a few fevers in my life, but this was the. My, I remember my heart was right whilst I was literally sweating and freezing cold and feverish. I was burning up. I was literally, I was dead to the world. I felt like I was dying, literally. And I remember my heart was racing. And it was, my, my heart was racing like I was, if I was doing hill sprints. But obviously, I wasn't. I was curled up on a ball, literally shivering and like, fuck, basically. And my, 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 you talk, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go on. Yeah, a few days, like, sort of, so the first night was literally like I was dying. 
Second night, exactly the same, but slight, well, slightly less like I was dying. Third night, then it started feeling like normal flu. Like I can now watch a bit of something on the telly and literally start to eat. Fourth night, just felt like I've been to Ibiza for three days, haven't slept and drank, like hanging. It took me a full week to get back like to a to run for half an hour and like literally train. And I'm young and fit, you know, and I thought, I thought, fuck man, I like, God forbid my dad, my nan, because my heart, like I can see now how people are having heart attacks and dying because like, yeah. that's a lot. That's why you're saying, Louis, um, health is so important. Like these people, like you're saying, look on YouTube, find a coach, they need to get their body fat down. They need to control their cholesterol now before that long-term plaque builds up in their arteries. Because if, when they do catch a disease like this, it's going to knock them back, like, for six, if not, bloody kill them, you know? Yeah, if so you have diabetes or anything like that, you're, you're at huge risk. And, uh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, training is not all about fighting. It's about being healthy as well. And you, you, yeah. you, you've got to do stuff. I mean, I had it for 17 days, and I'm fit and healthy, and I've never been so sick in my life. Yeah, yeah. 100 BPM for 15 days solid. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't even get out of bed. I, I, I've never been that fucking ill. How long did you? Hey? You had it for 15 days, you felt it. Yeah. I had it for 17 days. The, last, the first two weren't too bad. All the bits in the middle were I, like, you know, I, I was seriously sick. And then the last one or two were, were okay. And then it took me probably three weeks on top of that just to kind of feel normal training again. It not me yeah. about a month. Maybe yeah, athleticism back. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I was sort of hanging, but I wasn't at full capacity. Like it'd take yeah, another week or so. Like that's yeah. It's crazy, man. So you got you got any plans to fight again? Um I would like, do you know what all this all this COVID stuff makes you think, doesn't it? It makes you think it makes you uh contemplate your life and what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I'd I'd like to. See how, see how it goes. Uh, you know what? I've got, I've got a, I've got to commit with that energy. I've got to put yeah. the energy, the energy you put into it. I mean, the fight that the, this turning up on the that you got to make sure you turn up on the day. But that the initial eight weeks of prep, that's that's the, that's the one, mate. That's what you've got to be. Yeah, if you want to do it, you've got to go all in if you want to do it, man. Oh, yeah, mate. You've got to, you've got to have you have got to have good people around you. You can't have, like, you can't, like, no, you know, you know, you get in people, oh, well, it's, you can't have any of that, oh, well, you, you got to have the right people around you, you got to have the right team around you, your missus, you got to have a good girlfriend. Yeah, you need you know, a good support network, you need a good support yeah, network to be a fighter. Support, yeah. That's it, and uh, you've got to, you've got to be, you've got to, you've got to be, you can't, you've got, I always say, um, you can't, you can't go, you can't, you can't go into a gunfight with an with a unloaded gun, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you've got to make sure you're fully, fully up for it, mate. Well, if you're fighting again, let us know. We'll have you on um, on the build up to it, hundred percent. Because let the viewers know. Um, it's been wicked talking, man. Just getting a little insight about your, you know, your life as a fighter and your training. Yeah, yeah. Doing it now to help people, which is which is great. So if people want to find you, it's ladfitnessperformance.com, right? Yeah, yeah. What's your Instagram? You've got Instagram, you do Instagram? Uh, yeah, at laz.fitness. Okay, uh, so L-A-Z dot fitness, right? Yeah, yeah. So they can find you on Instagram as well. Um, get in touch, guys, if you want to wanna start learning how to be a savage, elbows, knees, kicks. Oh. Uh, just get your get your mind and your fitness right, get in touch with Laz, and he, um, he'll show you the way. He'll show you the way. Cool. Dude, great for, to have you on. Got to wrap up here. Um, but we'll do this again, man. We'll do this again for sure. Awesome. Cool. Buddy, take care. You too, mate. Take care, man. Speak to you guys. See you, mate. See you later, guys.